I think atrial fibrillation will be one of the primary things very early on that we'll be able to understand, but there'll be other things too, that it'll all be based on prevention instead of um, treatment per se. Mm -hmm. We know how to treat, we need to prevent it. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's where we'll, we'll be um, down the road. Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And I, again, am here with Mr. Mark Goddard, who is the Vice President of Clinical Services for an organization called Infobionic.com. And Mark and I, we have been talking about AFib and coronary heart disease and things like that. I want to just take uh, go back. Tell me a little bit about how technology is helping to, you know, overall um, yeah. in this, in science? Well, we'll, we'll go right back to AI. So artificial intelligence this. is making a big change. Um, the first AI algorithm that we've had uh, FDA approved and we're going to deploy on our system yeah. is one that will tell the practitioner whether their um, pump function is either normal or not normal from their heart. Mm -hmm. So if the normal amount of blood is being ejected out of their heart, with every heartbeat, it'll say, okay, we're good. If it's not, it'll let the practitioner know that, hey, things aren't good. Yeah. And that's associated with heart failure. So it's a great tool that we'll be able to use mm -hmm. just with an ECG. That's a bit of a game changer. And it will be deployed like in the next six months. That is amazing. It that really is amazing. Is. And it's amazing how AI can early detect things that we've never been able to do and how clinical research is evolving. I know we've had a lot of uh, doctors on our show about early detection of Alzheimer's disease. You know, the, the thing is, is that you guys in medical science that are doing things and the, the ability to have AI detect certain things that we've never been able to do before, um, it's going to save lives like tenfold. And if we didn't have this, this science and technology, you know, there's so many diseases that are, are, are on the rise. And yeah. yet this is something that I think is just fascinating. Totally agree. Um, we're going to be able to glean more information from an, uh, an electrocardiogram that you would ever have dreamed things that aren't necessarily Amazing. related to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and we're working on those things. And you'll be surprised at what information we'll be able to understand um, in the next 10 years just by taking an ECG mm -hmm. of your heart. Yeah. This is this is going to affect life expectancy, I'm sure. Um much more, you know, and seniors are already living longer than we were. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we've been just in our lane is we're seeing like the sandwich generation where when I was in that age group, when I had an old, you know, an a elder parent and a and children still in my age group, um, the thing was is that that only lasted like maximum four to six years well now yeah. they're seeing that double that because the seniors are living longer and the kids yeah. are staying home longer so obviously this life and expectancy is is increasing in this country is it not it is and it'll continue to do so um to a point um although who knows with technology things might change where we can live a lot longer than we would ever have dreamed yeah uh, especially with some of the there are some animals in the wild that live very, very, very long times and understanding how they do that and, and uh, what that looks like may change things for us. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and sure. seeing how, you know, I, seeing animals that, I mean, tortoises mm -hmm. over a hundred years sometimes, and, yeah. and you're looking at so many, uh, you know, the life expectancy of so many types of, of, um, you know, ways in which we can improve not only longer, but better quality of life. Um, you know, I think about cardiovascular, my mom had a vascular dementia, right? Mm -hmm. So there's uh, obviously that will change, yes. will it not? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So obviously with cardiovascular disease and how the future, how do you envision AI, you know, embracing a lot of those techno technologies. I think the AI is just going to give us that um, preemptive warning related to whatever it may be down the road. I think atrial fibrillation will be one of the primary things very early on that we'll be able to understand, but there'll be other things too that 
it'll all be based on prevention instead of um, treatment per se. Well, mm -hmm. we know how to treat, we need to prevent it. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's where we'll, we'll be um, down the road. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously going to your doctor, it really starts right back with making sure you're getting adequate uh, checks, checkups, things like that. How often should people be checked out? It all depends on what the baseline looks like for that particular person. For me, I would say every two years to your cardiologist, mm -hmm. unless you have things going on, if you do, then it's going to be increased depending on right. what you say. Yeah. Well, and obviously if people have high, higher blood pressure, that's something to be concerned about. And with your device, obviously you're going to be able to check out if somebody's blood pressure is higher, correct? Or things like that. Is no. that part of it? It's just an electrocardiogram right now that's being recorded. Down the road, we do plan on incorporating blood pressure into the monitor. Wow. Right that's now. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be right back, everyone. In the meantime, you can go to infobionic.com right after this. Did you know that you could discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.